everyone. We've got anyone joining us today? They should all be inside with it being miserable weather. Yeah, it's not very nice. Is it? It's horrible. Makes this lockdown even worse, doesn't it, when you can't even go out into your garden? <laughs> yeah, hopefully it'll just be this week and then they'll be back to hopefully. nice sunny weather next week. Oh, we've got three people. Who are those three people? Four. Five. It's going up. Can one of you just comment? Make sure you can see us, hear us. So far, there's been no problems, but I don't want to take the chance of you starting your class and I don't know it's working okay. We've got Georgia, Alexia, Joe, Katie. Why don't you just give me a comment, please? Sarah, two Sarahs, Leah, oh thank you, right we're up and running, we're okay. So hi everyone, we have Sam back today, um, she was with us, was it Sunday you were with us? Yeah, um, but Sunday. Today she's doing a baby development class which will be things like baby massage, signing, baby yoga, um, rhythm and rhyme, messy play, sensory, um, so it's more of a practical today, even if your baby's not born yet, um, still watch it because it's great for future reference and you can always refer back to it. Um, if you've got any questions as we go along, as usual, pop them in the comments and I will ask Sam as she's doing her class. So yeah, over <coughs> to you Sam, thank you. Hi everybody, so I'm Sam and um, I'm just going to talk a little bit to start with. Sorry, it's just come on. <laughs> Um, talk a little bit about baby development, which is a course that I run with uh, Bambino Bells, which is my own company. And then we're going to do a little bit of practical. So just to give you a bit of an understanding of what it is we're doing, rather than just talking about the whole course, so you can actually see little bits and bobs from it. It's kind of difficult doing um, the virtual classes because it's obviously massively different than what it is face to face. Um, so there's obviously a lot less involvement from me and a lot more from just yourself. So I'll just discuss a little bit about it and um, why I decided to start a course called Baby Development. So Baby Development, I decided to combine a wide variety of different classes that I already was running because there was a large number of mums that were coming to me that were in, incredibly interested in doing so many courses, but either financially they couldn't do the massage, baby yoga, rhythm and rhyme and messy, or they were off on, on maternity for a really short amount of time. And this happens to quite a lot of individuals where they might only have enough maternity to take enough time and money to kind of have three months off. So I essentially just devised a course and called it Baby Development, which involves baby massage, baby yoga, um, rhythm and rhyme, and sensory and mesosensory. And I run this over a week of six, um, six sessions. Usually they would obviously be face to face, but currently we're doing them as virtual sessions. So I'll start from the start and then we'll go through each one and then we'll do um, a little bit of a practical aspect. So with a baby massage, we're not going to be able to do it every day because we do require some oil, um, which usually I give to the mums or you can buy your own. So we tend to advise things like fractionated coconut oil because it is highly unlikely for your little ones to have a reaction to, or sunflower oil. Both are organic to reduce the risk and to make sure that anything that we, of course, our babies with is safe because of course it's going to be absorbed into their bloodstream into their organs and everything else so with the baby development we do baby massage and we focus mainly on the colic routine and also the leg routine so those are the two aspects that we do over the course of the two weeks the reason why we do the colic routine is first thing we do is mainly because a lot of the mums come and their babies are only just turned six weeks, seven weeks old. And roughly around that stage is when babies, um, if they have got colic or have got trapped uh, wind, that's usually when they're kind of struggling, starting to struggle the most with, uh, with that. So 
first lesson, you've obviously got kind of like an instant relief. So it's incredibly, um, it was just great for the mums because they know, know that they have the tools and the skills to go home and practice that. And the good thing about the colic routine is that you can do this at literally every single nappy change. So you can do it if baby's having 10 wet nappies a day, including, um, you know, dirty nappies, then you can do that 10 times a day. So it's a fantastic thing to do. On week three and four, we start at looking at baby yoga when baby is a little bit older. So we usually wait roughly until baby's kind of eight weeks onwards at that point. Um, and it goes right up through to um, one year of age for the baby development. So it's a great course to either do right at the start or do at any point within that first year alive. So it's just fantastic. With the baby yoga, we focus on the legs and the arms and chest with our babies. And not only that, we do yoga with the little ones, but we also do some yoga for the mums, which is great. We don't, we don't have to have any yoga experience. You haven't got to uh, be super flexible. You haven't got to be naughty. You don't have to be a competitive person. It's just purely to help calm the mind and give you skills as well um, to learn that you can do uh, to keep your mind healthy. Uh, but as well, it really helps with the pelvic floors to strengthen the abs and um, the lower back. So after childbirth, usually most women do suffer quite a lot with back pain and it's usually because their abdominal muscles have been affected so much throughout pregnancy that you're walking a little bit funny and therefore you're kind of overcompensating in certain aspects of um you know posture so you will learn to hold yourself totally differently in order to deal with potentially the pain that you're having so the yoga is great for the little ones and also for us with the massage and the yoga, the reason why we do it is just so many reasons. We learn, we're learning new skills. It's increasing our confidence, but also the little one's confidence. You're learning new strokes on um, both baby massage sessions and all with the yoga, you're learning new poses on both weeks. You're also learning playful moves and rhymes for your little ones and because you are alter you're altering your tone of voice it's just great if you are struggling a little bit with those low moods or the baby blues or maybe have been diagnosed with pmd or you know kind of struggling with talking to your baby we help you to um have kind of like a normal conversation with your baby through rhythm and rhyme so singing nursery rhyme for example your tone of voice alters which straight away will help your baby to feel closer to you and will help to release oxytocin, which as you may know, is the love hormone. So it's great um, for both to do that. While we do this as well, you're really helping your baby's muscle tone and strengthening the bones, the flexibility with body awareness, brain development. We'll give you tips on tummy time, um, so many different things. So it's just a fantastic thing, as well as meeting other mums. So even though we're doing virtual sessions at the moment, we are still doing some Zoom sessions and you get to meet other mums like that. We also got a private book group, which means um, you can comment pictures, you can comment ideas or things or questions and other people can comment. I can give my expert advice and so on. So we've roughly got about 93 people at the moment. So it's quite a large number of individuals. Um, they're loving the sessions, the variety, and they're building friendships. You know, some of my mums are like yourselves, have either just had baby or about to have baby. So the ones that are about to have baby, some of them are already into the group, but no extra pass, just to kind of form bonds and friendships already with those mums that have maybe just had babies. So when baby is here, you've kind of got, you know, um, a group of mums already. Is that all right so far, Jade? Have you got any questions or people just- No, just- Listening. <laughs> um, 
Next thing we do in the baby development class after the four weeks, so on week five, we do a rhythm and rhyme sessions with, with um, rhyme, rhythm and rhyme session, which is essentially baby signing bitter sensory and um, looking at calming holds and activities which are going to help kind of stimulate baby that are fun and engaging. So the first part of the rhythm and rhyme session is usually things such as um, the LED lights, the dark tents. We do a little bit of signing and focus on on sensory attributes that tend to be black and white, depending on the age of the baby, of course. So um, the groups are, are mixed, but the majority of the individuals that come to baby development, all those ones usually are from six weeks to literally nine months. I haven't had that many individuals who kind of come after nine months. So you're all essentially in the same boat, which is just lovely. And because we have some little ones that are slightly older, it's great that brand new mums, even if they're on number two or number three, to kind of discuss and be like, oh, I don't remember this with my first or whatever it may be. And the last week, um, we have a sensory sessions, but so it's split into two parts. Part one and part two. Part one tends to be literally a um, sensory area with five tough trays, which are just dry for our younger baby to keep the leaf, but being in different textures, different sounds, and all sorts on their hands and on their feet. And for the slightly older ones. The ones that are literally kind of five months plus then there is a messy play area which contains six trays over it's quite a large hall so we kind of spread them out a little bit and they just have fun in there for the whole hour so it's um it's a really nice mix um whether it's whether your maternity is short or whether you have a long maternity it, you kind of or whether you want to try out different classes before you kind of commit to um, you know, baby massage or baby yoga or rhythm and rhyme or messy play. It's nice because you kind of get to experience them all. So we're going to do a little bit of um, yoga. If anybody is watching, I'm just going to run through a couple of safety things, of course, as I have to. And I do apologise that I am going to have to move my camera when I do the practical yoga aspect because you're not going to see my baby on the floor so i'm going to have to move that in a second so you might just see my hand for a minute so i do apologize first things first is when you're doing um yoga just remember that it's really important that baby has not had a feed in at least 40 to 45 minutes okay if your little one suffers with reflux then try and make that an hour i do totally understand that especially while they are so tiny an hour is essentially their next feed especially if they're breastfed um but try your best to make it at least 40 to 45 minutes just so that we are not um going to make them sick in any way at all because it's not going to be pleasant for them and it certainly won't be pleasant for us either when we are doing the yoga just follow my lead your baby needs to be on a hard surface, but also soft. So ideally on the floor with maybe a few blankets to kind of make it a little bit softer for them. And just make sure that um, you kind of follow the instructions with just doing a velvet float first. Probably sounds quite crazy, but what we always do is ask our babies for permission first. Um, and the reason why we do that essentially is because just like is we don't want to do since then we're not going to take part and we shouldn't have to do it so if um they are consenting by showing yes cues such as happy smiling um engaging whether they might not look at you they might look around the room and that's absolutely fun but just making sure that they are um okay with what it is that you are doing okay so i'm just going to move my camera so we can start with yoga because my phone is okay so i'm just going to pop baby to the side so you can see exactly what i'm doing essentially when you're doing this can you see everything jay yeah yeah it's fine but i'm so far away now i can't see anything <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, fab. Um, so when you are doing the baby yoga or baby massage, you would essentially be sitting facing your baby. I'm just sitting this way so I can just show you. I am going to be moving my baby at different angles so you can see um, exactly what it is we are doing. So the first thing we would do is an opening sequence, which is essentially asking our baby's permission. And this, we're putting both hands at the top of their head. So you are literally creating like a little love heart at the top of their head. Okay, both hands at the top of their head, gliding your hands down all the way down their body, incredibly gently. You're lifting one hand up back at the top. If you notice, my voice changed slightly which is just slowing down and it's much calmer. There we go. And we do that three times in total. So while we're doing the velvet cloak, my little dolly seems to be presenting yes cues. She's quite happy looking around the room. You'll know when your baby is not happy to do something. Their arms might agitate quite a lot, legs might move quite a lot, and they might well arch their back. Okay. The difference with massage and yoga is massage, we would undress our babies fully including the nappies so if you're not brave enough to kind of if they're a boy or a girl really it kind of sprinkles everywhere when they're first when they're so tiny you can just undo the strap on their nappies and just keep the front part up with yoga what we're doing is our babies are fully clothed okay so what we're going to do is we're going to give one more velvet cloak all the way down nice and calm and we're going to cut the back of baby's bum so i'm going to pick my baby up just to show you where i'm putting my hands i'm going to pop my hands just here on baby's bum here so you can see my hands are not touching okay because along their spine they've got thousands of nerve receptors and we want to keep this a nice calm activity if we start touching their spine they're going to become a little bit overstimulated okay so cupping the back of baby's bum gliding your hands down and we're just going to start by gently very gently marching our baby's legs to the natural point of resistance so you can see that i'm just very gently essentially doing a bicycle which is what some people will know this as all right so we're just calling it marching and you're just starting off really gently to warm the muscles up to warm the joints up and to help with the tendons and flexibility. The more you do these activities, the more flexible your baby will obviously become. And the great thing about this activity is that this is fantastic for wind, but sometimes they do seem a little bit uncomfortable and it's not always trapped wind they've got. They've kind of got trapped air in the diaphragm. So this is also a fantastic, fantastic one to do. To do. Oops your baby has reached six weeks you can do these activities and when baby has reached 12 weeks with the marching we can go a little bit quicker and we're going to sing the grand old duke of york so if your baby's 12 weeks and over you can go a little bit quicker and we'll sing the grand old duke of york he had ten thousand men he marched them up to the top of the hill and he marked them down again and when they were up they were up and when they were down they were down and when they were only halfway up, they were neither up nor down. Fantastic. Okay. Brilliant. Next thing that you would do is you would again pop the back of the baby's bum, slide your hands down, and we're just going to alternate. So one leg goes over the top and one leg goes over the underneath. And you're just alternating very slowly. And this is just called a jolly jive. So you're just going up and down. And this is great hip flexibility now with this one you would always go nice and slow so that there's no twisting of the hips now as you can see i'm just going up and down okay please ensure that you don't pull your baby's legs apart it's really important to keep your hips the baby's hips nice and level okay so you just go up and down up and down and we just sing bar bar black sheep for this one so bar bar black sheep have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. One for the master and one for the dame. And one for the little boy who lives down the lane. Fantastic. Next thing I'm going to do is a tummy turn. So this one 
is especially good if they do suffer with discomfort around their tummy, okay? So we're gonna cut the back of baby's bum's legs, slide your hands down their legs, and then gently bend the knees to the natural point of resistance. And what we're gonna do is a very gentle clockwise circle, uh, nice and gently. As you can see, I'm doing nice and gentle circles. My baby is remaining still as best as possible. Baby's head, neck, shoulders, spine, hips and bum will remain on the floor. I'm literally just moving their legs to a very short left leg. We've got a little visitor. <laughs> Can you say hi? <laughs> Look, there's a little bugger on the screen now too. Can you see them? So very nice and gently, little circles. Now this is essentially massaging the tummy. When they first start, and when you first start the baby yoga, you may not well be able to touch their tummies with their legs, and that's fine. Every baby's flexibility is totally different, just like our flexibility. And as long as you're being gentle, then that's all you need to do. When baby gets used to it and you get used to it, it's just like this, the more stretching we do, the more exercise we do, our endurance increases, our flexibility increases, and it's just the same for our little babies. And then you would just let their legs down when you've done that. Everything we do is always clockwise. That way, it's kind of ingrained into us to do everything clockwise. When we are looking at their tummies, it's important to do clockwise so that we are getting rid of blockages and not causing any blockages. Okay, so we're gonna do something called a frog pose now. So you are literally putting your baby's feet together. As you can see, my baby's feet are together. No, their feet frog pose. There's no talk, it's just me. So we're putting our baby's feet together and we're just going to rock baby nice and gently forward and back, forward and back, forward and back. Okay. And we're going to sing row, row, row. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Rock, rock, rock. Your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Fantastic. <coughs> okay, and the last one we're going to do is where baby is in lotus pose. So one leg is presented to you, however they present it, nice and long, and then the other leg, if willing, you're going to bend it to either their ankle their shin or their knee. This is just based on flexibility. And we're just going to hold it for there for five seconds. So one, two, three, four, five. Fantastic. And one, two, three, four, five. And you go nice and gentle for this. And this is fantastic for body awareness. <laughs> This is fantastic for body awareness. So they're then just understanding that they have feet and that they have legs, especially if they're tiny and if they've not quite figured that out yet. Brilliant. And now we're going to give our little babies a nice big stretch. So you're going to crack at the bum, just like we demonstrated right at the start. Slide your hands all the way down the back of their legs, supporting their ankles. And this is going to seem probably rather strange if you've not done this before. But you are just incredibly gently, just very gently pulling on your baby's legs, just to give them a little stretch, okay? Because we've worked the hips and the legs, it can be quite tiring for them. So they just need a nice stretch. And we do that three times. Just hold it to the count of five. Whoa. Brilliant. And then one more time. Okay. Yeah. What are you gonna do with my mum again? You're gonna dance with mummy on my on my leg. Uh, 
put me in the egg. Um, oh yeah, of course we will. Okay, fantastic. So we finished our baby yoga. So you always end up with party, which is the velvet cloak. All the way to the bottom of the feet. So you do that three times, keeping in touch with your baby. Something important to just mention is when you are doing baby massage or baby yoga, it may not seem like a big exercise for your little ones, but it can be quite tiring for them. So I'm just going to move this up now, hopefully. Here we go. So it can be quite tiring for them and not just tiring, they can be quite thirsty. They have actually done quite a lot of work, even though we've only worked on, of course, on body part today with um, the, the legs, of course. So if you are breastfeeding, then please give your baby some milk. If you're bottle feeding, then do make them one ounce if possible, uh, just so they can have something to consume, you know, that is liquid that's going to help them um, to reduce their body temperature. Because we are giving them a massage, sorry, yoga, it is raising their body temperature. So it is important that they have something to drink. Just like if we went running or if we were having a massage, our body temperature has increased. And therefore it's important for them as well to have something to drink. Yeah. Okay, I don't want to know about my thumb, darling. So we're going to do some rhythm now. We're going to do a little bit. Are you going to join me? Yeah. So, oh, is she just starting to wake up? She should not mm. You might want to turn your sound down a little bit, Jade, for you, because I'm going to put the music on. It's fine, don't worry. Are you sure? Yeah, nothing wakes her up usually. Oh, she's too cute. Too cute. Right. Let's These are my toys for my room. Yeah. Right, let's see how we can pop this back up. These are my toys for my room. These are my toys for my room. I'm going to pick them up because I don't want this thing. I've just, um, my husband's using my tripod. So, He's got it in his office by that. I'm just trying to find something that can um, keep it shot. Okay. So, that, I think, it's so difficult seeing, you know, like horizontally. I'm so used to having it. Um, sorry, landscape. Yeah, you have, haven't you? Okay, so, are you ready? Good, Daddy. Can you yeah, we are. Right, so we usually start off with our hello song. So we're going to do our hello song. We're going to do the hello song first. So with the signing, with everything we do is we use BSL, which is British Sign Language. You don't like your hello song. So we use the British Sign Language. Uh, and um, all of the signs and all of the things that we do, do are different every week so it's different themes and our, our little ones of course learn best through repetition therefore it's imp imp important that we of course repeat our songs so that they are understanding and that they can do the signs on a weekly basis so we tend to stick to different themes but some of the songs from week one or so on will continue the following week and as we progress all the way through so the course is usually an eight week course and but we have we have information yeah we have information to do a 16 week course so i have quite a lot of individuals that kind of come and come back and come back rhythm and rhyme is quite a popular one so we'll do in a second darling so we're going to do where we're going to hide okay so we start off with saying a big hello. Can you do it? Big hello. Arabella's not playing ball today. <laughs> so we've got a big hello. And we've got thank you for joining us. Thank you. So when we do the rhythm and rhyme, we teach our mummies that certain signs, you can start by doing a sign like milk, 
for example and you can continue that and you can continue that sign for a little while and there's no um age too early to start with sign language so this big misconception about signing is that it will reduce verbal communication when i promise you it's scientifically proven to increase verbal communication so signing is just a fantastic thing to do for little ones it's incredibly great because it just helps them to reduce frustration if they're struggling verbally and you need to give them a few signs that are quite key such as milk or food then it's something that they can say to you exactly you know if they're kind of whining a little bit upset or struggling to communicate to you by giving them specific signs that they can learn that you're doing on a regular basis they might not be able to communicate verbally but it will just reduce frustration because they'll just do this and rather than crying and whining you'll know exactly what it is that they're going to do are you going to do the grand old duke of york with me now yeah come on then okay so again with this one make sure that your little ones haven't had um a feed or a meal in the last kind of 40 45 minutes and then grab Hi, hold of your, yeah grab hold of your little ones and we're going to do the grand old duke of york so we're not going to do any signing for this one to start with we're just going to do the grand old duke of york and when we go up we go up and when we go down we go down yeah Okay. from right now so i just need to rush off for a second to get her what she wants otherwise she's just gonna go crazy so if you just bear with me one second sorry dave Sorry about that. it's a sign of what's to come guys <laughs> i'm sure some of you older kids can understand okay thank you otherwise we're just gonna have total meltdown okay so we're going to do my next favourite song, which is Five Little Monkeys. So the songs vary week on week with the themes, based on the themes. And we use different props depending on what we do. So today we've got, um, today at two o'clock, uh, we've got a private Facebook group for all the virtual class sessions. And we've got our theme is transport so we've got a variety of different songs which we're obviously going to do using different parts all surrounding transport with hula hoops and we have like pom-poms and lights and just their lights and all sorts so i'm just obviously giving you a couple of songs so you kind of see what we do and then we start okay Right now, 
just to buy. even a toddler anymore is she she's like nearly three and a half but yeah she is finding it hard right now to just not be at school and um she made me really sad the other day she said you're my only friend oh, bless. <laughs> oh and it broke my heart and then it made me think actually i am her only friend so it's no wonder she wants my attention all the time okay so oh i am your only friend we're gonna play peekaboos now so i use a bottle cloth but you can use a tea towel. Now, the reason why we can do this and why peekaboos are so important, one, they're fun, and little ones absolutely love playing peekaboos. But also, if you are kind of um, close to going back to work, I know we're like in a very strange situation right now, but playing peekaboos is fantastic to help with separation anxiety. So every session, we would play peekaboos with our little ones. So we tend to put the voils or the tea towels over our heads. So if you're at home, you can use a tea towel. And we just say to our little ones saying, where is baby, where is baby, peekaboo? And you would of course reveal baby. And you can play this a fair few times throughout the day. And we might not realize it, but the benefits of this is great. Because even though this is thin and of course see-through, it is helping them to understand that once they're being covered, then you're there again. So you're being covered and you've gone away for a second, but you're there again. So the more you play it, it just helps hugely with separation anxiety. So it's a fantastic game to play. And then when you've done it with the little ones, then we say, where is mommy? Where is mommy? Where is mommy? Where is mommy? So again, you're doing it with yourself and you can do it with your partner. And this is just helping with separation anxiety. So that's something nice that we're doing with them. Um, you can also do it with a little mirror. So we have mirrors for every single one of our attendants. Obviously, right now, we're not doing face-to-face -face sessions. So if mummies, if you have mirrors at home that are, of course, safe, then you know, little ones usually, whether it's like little makeup mirrors or um, kind of like little makeup preparation mirrors that, you know, kind of like six inches or something. You can use them with the little ones and just a plain peekaboo. So the face at the back of the mirror where it's obviously black or whatever pattern it is, and then you flip it over so they can start recognizing themselves with the mirrors. Recognition usually starts roughly about eight months old. So playing in the mirrors, whether you've got a mirror in the hall or in the bathroom or on the landing, if it's safe, you can play peekaboos with your little ones going from obviously not seeing the mirror to seeing the mirror. Great idea for them to do. Also, if you have lots of these little soft toys, then these are fantastic as well for them. You can set out lots of different activities for them. Um, you can do, for example, Peter Rabbit song, which is what we're going to do in a second. So this is one of our favourite ones with our slightly older children. Are you going to do Peter Rabbit? Are you going to do Peter Rabbit? Uh, thank you. Don't, don't do that, darling. Thank you. Okay, so we're just going to do Peter Rabbit now. And then we're going to do our instrument song. Yes, darling. Are you ready to do Peter Rabbit? Yeah. 
Okay, so we've got Peter Rabbit. So you've got your ears, whether that's full hands or your fingers. And then you're going to do Peter Rabbit has got a fly upon its nose. Peter Rabbit has got a fly upon its nose. Oh, you're no darling. You have to be sausage. Okay, we'll get one in a minute. We'll get one in a minute. Why don't you go downstairs and lay on the sofa? Okay. Yeah. Oh dear, life is just all a little bit much for a three-year-old right now. <laughs> Bless her. Okay, so you've got Peter Rabbit. He's got a fly upon its nose. Peter Rabbit's got a fly upon his nose. And he swished it and he swashed it and the fly flew away. Then we've got floppy ears and curly whiskers. Floppy ears and curly whiskers. Okay, so usually at the start of every single song that we do that is new, I kind of go through like I've just done here with the Peter Rabbit with the songs. We then have the props, the lights, and whatever else on that we are using that day. So I'll just sing it with you today. We've got Peter Rabbit's got a fly upon its nose. Peter Rabbit's got a fly upon its nose. Peter Rabbit's got a fly upon its nose. Then he swished it and he swashed it and the fly flew away. Floppy ears and curly whiskers. Floppy ears and curly whiskers. Floppy ears and curly whiskers. And he swished it and he swashed it and the fly flew away. Fantastic. So give those a try. We're going to do one more in a second. Um, definitely give them a try. They're fantastic. And you've got a few there already. So you can have a look at those and learn them by step. And it's something nice and different that you can do, as well as it being a new skill for you and your partner. If baby's not here yet, that's fine. You can learn those skills of what to do before. So when baby is here, there are then things that you can obviously um, start doing. Okay, so we also look at a lot of musical instruments. We do play quite a lot of musical instruments in our sessions because sound is so important to our little ones, whether we use tambourines, or a maraca or anything else as well as my favorite ones are like my little masks that we use so we're just looking at when we do our instruments we're looking at sounds so we go from loud to quiet and then we go from fast to slow and then we focus on getting the little ones to carry on and then stop them so we'll just do one of our songs we have about five or six different ones six different ones for the the speed um, and the noise level and different things that we learn throughout the course. So it's nice and different on a regular basis. So I'll just go through the first one. Then we've got, we can play the instrument, the instrument, the instrument. We can play the instrument, the mix the sound. We can play the loudly, loudly, loudly. We can play the loudly, the mix sound. We can play the quietly, quietly, quietly. We can play the quietly. understanding whatever age it is that they are attending into the bigger that they get they can obviously hold their instruments and they can start working on shaping them fast shaping them slow so it's great for hand-eye coordination and understanding instructions as well as concentration so every song that we have has a purpose to it which is even more fantastic and when it's time to go home we always sing a different going home song so we kind of switch between two. So we've got, it's time to go home. And then we've got another one, which is called goodbye. So we'll do one today, which is it's time to go home. So I'll show you the signs and it could be another one that we can learn at the same time. So we've got, it's time to go home. It's time to go home. And then we say mummies, which is your three finger on your palm, just once. Mummies and daddies which is your two fingers, mummies and daddies, it's time to go home. And if you have different individuals there, so I have quite a lot of grandparents that attend my sessions, then we obviously focus on saying thank you to them at the same time. And I have quite a lot of carers that come to our sessions, whether they're childminders or foster carers. 
So we'll just do this song. So we've got it's time to go home. It's time to go home. Mummies and daddies, it's time to go home. It's time to go home. It's time to go home. Mummies and daddies, it's time to go home. Fantastic. And that's kind of all I've got to say really for today. I hope it's been helpful in um, giving a little bit of a description about what baby development is and also a little bit of an understanding of what baby massage is, baby yoga and what the benefits are those because they are huge. And that's kind of actually what made me start Bambino Bells is um, because I suffered really badly with postnatal depression and I didn't know it at the time. So um, doing the yoga and the massage classes really helped me to connect with my daughter, which I was finding quite hard to do. And from then onwards, then that's why I set up Bambino Bells. Uh, it did used to be called Baby Bells, but we had to change the name. And because I just wanted to help other mums out there, whether they did suffer with PND or low moods, or whether they're fine and they're connecting with baby, to just give them a new skills, new confidence, because you've got a lot to get used to when you become a mum. It's the most amazing thing in the world, but of course it can be quite challenging. Um, so yeah, I hope it's been okay. Thank you. Yeah, I went to a few classes like this where Martha was younger and they were brilliant. And yeah, yeah. the best thing about it is she slept for hours after. <laughs> oh exhausted. yeah, that so. is that is the good thing. I mean, I remember a lot of my classes were at my my friends that we all kind of fell pregnant together. They lived at the other side of Leicester, so I went to all the classes where they went to. And on the home, I mean, our Rebella would definitely sleep for a good two hours. Mm. Um, so I used to go through McDonald's drive through have a coffee, sit in the car park. I know, that's probably <laughs> And the just best kind of enjoy it. time to myself. <laughs> it's brilliant. It just, yeah. it wears them out as well. It's obviously educating them at such an early age. Yeah, and it's for you as well. You get to meet other mums and, you know, you can try out different classes. There's tons of them about as well, which is great. That's and it's it. finding something that suits you. You know, baby mum yoga isn't always for everybody because it's at a much slower pace it's great for the babies but it doesn't suit everybody um so you know rhythm and rhyme and messy might be more for you you just have to check out when um the sessions start and what age it's suitable for and i know a lot of places do trials as well i don't know if you do oh that. yeah um, yeah i do trials i usually do two weeks rather than one because i think with one week it's quite hard to tell whether you like it you might be having a bad day baby might not be feeling up for it so I always think just two two sessions you can get a better feel for it but yeah always that's a good idea and then it's good for the mums as well see what it's like see if it's for them and I think try before you buy everyone oh uh, that, don't yeah they? definitely so, yeah Danielle was just saying um her little girl started it four weeks signing and her little boy who's only a few weeks old four days brilliant. yeah that, that signing is just so powerful it's just so great and it's just um just so beneficial on so many different levels to help with communication as long as you are doing the sign and you are um verbally communicating that word so for example food and you're doing the sign food and you are saying the word then it's only going to help them verbally mm. to just keep progressing forward definitely i wish i'd done it more with martha to be honest it's like one yeah. of the things that you know for the next one, but I didn't really know much about it when she was very yeah. small. So. I, I think a lot of individuals do have to think of signing, you know, I'd rather not do that because I do worry it's going to, um, you know, affect my little one's verbal communication. But I can promise you, you know, it has been scientifically proven that it does um, enhance Mommy, that. We'll sort out in a minute, you know, like, uh, Verbal communication is universal grammar, so it's innate in us. Um, some some children do communicate verbally a lot later than others. So it's important to remember is don't compete against some of the mums. You know, there's no competition. Everything is at your own pace and your child's pace. And what they will excel in one thing, they may not, you know, do everything initially all at the same time. Some children that are very physical often are slower at kind of like verbal communication because they're just so physical and so observant they're focusing on everything else and verbal communication is just not on their radar right now or they might be off with it 
where they are very, like my daughter was very verbal, but didn't, didn't walk until she was just over 12 months. Mm. So. They all develop differently, don't they? They get there in the end, and that's the main thing. There's no Absolutely. point comparing your child to your friend's child. No, because no. And don't yeah, know. and they don't, don't look on social media every five minutes for all so-and-so on the MCT group's already walked in their mind's not, there must be something wrong, and it's all okay, you know, don't worry about it. They do develop at different times. I've had quite a few mums where their little ones have been 14 months and still bum shuffling, mm-hmm. and um, that's fine. They will just walk when they're ready. That's it, and in my job, I see babies at all ages, and they're all so different. There's not like, oh, at that age they do this, at that age they do that. It's, and I always say to the parents, don't panic, unless they're at a certain age where you really should be concerned. But otherwise, just let them do their thing. They'll get there eventually. And you find oh. as well that all of a sudden they just do things all in one. Yeah. Like they learn like four different things one day, and you're like, what? <laughs> that normally takes months yeah. to learn. So. I mean, I remember like, Arabella. She rolled at twelve weeks, and I was just like, oh my goodness. I was at a baby massage class actually. <laughs> And I was just like, can't believe she's just rolled. She didn't do it again until she was about six and a half, seven months. Yeah. She literally just, it was almost like everything she did, she ticked once and then never did it again. And then you start thinking to yourself with my child, like, but yeah, of course they are. They're absolutely perfect. Okay, darling, I'll pop these on. <laughs> They're absolutely perfectly fine. And um, they are just, you know, every single person is just so different. It all makes a difference. Yeah. Yeah, so just don't panic if the baby's not developing, as you might think, but they are. And, um, you know, like, throughout those sessions as well, let me just do it because my daughter's been so noisy. (laughs) While we do all these sessions as well, is we discuss um, lots of different things. So when you come to a session, you are attending whatever session it is you've booked for, but we are also talking about relevant topics. So whether it is tummy time and the importance of tummy time and, you know, like top tips and tricks on how to get your baby. Um, We look at postnatal depression, we look at low moods and, you know, mum and wellness and um, calming techniques and we look at lots of different things. So it's kind of a whole course, not just around baby, it's around the parent. And it's not just for mum, it can also be for dads. So we've got quite a lot of mums that uh, bring their partners. You know, some have like a Friday off or a Monday off or things like that. And while we're doing the virtual sessions, I've got quite a lot of dads that are on the virtual sessions um, who are just enjoying a little bit of quality time with their little one. And understanding as well, you know, like why I'm feeling this way or why things are a little bit hard at the moment and how they can help to kind of reduce the, the stress and the anxiety of mum as well. So there's lots of different things that we discuss as well, which is handy to have. Great. Yeah, that all sounds great. And hopefully it's inspired some people when they can to go to these sorts of classes and... Um... Yeah, even if it's just yeah, one definitely. Or the other. But brilliant, everyone's had it. Yeah. Here, so, three comments. Yeah, thank you, everyone yeah. for joining. Us. Thank you again, Sam, for awesome. giving your time yeah. a second time. Um, any more questions? If you're watching this later when we're not live anymore, pop them down. I'm sure Sam will be happy to answer them. But thank you, everyone. It's a shame it's not a nice day for you to go and sit in the garden, but hopefully it clears up at some point. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. But enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah. Um, thanks, Sam. Bye. 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 Thanks, Dave. Bye, everyone. Bye.